the trap of emojis. Emojis have become quite a popular form of expression over the years, particularly on social networks, often in an excessive way. Before emojis, there were emoticons, an earlier attempt to represent emotions and facial expressions by using text characters in digital communication. They typically consist of a combination of keyboard characters such as punctuation marks and letters, arranged in a way that forms a simple depiction of an emotion or facial expression. They're still in use today, as they are viewed by some as less primitive. Emojis are widespread for diverse reasons. First, they're ready to use since they're ready-made. They allow us to express emotion, feelings, and reactions visually and concisely. They add an emotional dimension to text messages, serving to temper the harshness of the written word and avoid the tensions of dialogue when the interlocutor is invisible and cannot express facial signs. They add a touch of friendliness and humanity to a rather abrupt digital conversation, creating a more relaxed, confident, and personal environment. Their simple, self-evident nature often transcends cultural boundaries. They are usually colorful and visually appealing, making them fun and pleasant to use. They help personalize and enliven messages. They have become an integral part of popular culture and online communication, almost becoming an obligation in certain cultures and contexts. But it seems to us that a somewhat abusive usage of those emojis manifests some revealing tendencies of our society. Let's just examine a few problematic aspects of the phenomenon. First, passivity. The usage of emojis short circuits the usage of concepts, since these ready-made symbols replace words and the expression of ideas. The absence of elaborated speech allows a certain passivity of the mind, both for the writer and the reader, since the coding of the message is very immediate. Over-reliance on emojis can make people less inclined to express themselves verbally or develop their written communication skills. The use of emojis is often an immediate reaction, an impatient automatism with little need to take the time to reflect and deliberate on the response to be made. Second is complacency. The emojis tend to be rather cute and funny. Their function is to create a friendly atmosphere. It has a relational function more than a conceptual one, either by totally replacing the words or by producing a diluting or softening effect when they accompany a text. They try to reassure the reader who could be worried or troubled by any suspicion of criticism or disagreement, often in a rather primitive manner. This attempt to create an emotional complicity tends to erase the reality principle that a true dialogue is supposed to provoke through difference of perspective, especially when it comes to discussing ideas. The intellectual content is drowned out by the attempt to establish good relation in a rather immature and childish way. The induced atmosphere is fictitious. Since reality must be pleasant, we must think positively the implicit message is, we are good people, we are together, we are on the right side of things. Our common well-meaning intentions 
serve as a way to recognize each other since we are all wonderful. We put on a show for others and for ourselves. We want to be liked and appreciated. We want to be reassured. An attitude that manifests a psychological fragility. Third is intellectual dullness. As we see, emojis do not encourage critical thinking. The irony is that some emojis do represent negative features, such as anger or disgust, but they're rarely used. In fact, some bloggers in their chat groups discourage any such expressions, even the rather bland thumbs down sign, since only positivity should be expressed. Emojis do not foster creativity either, since one uses ready-made expressions. There again, the irony is that there are today many emojis available to the user, some of them rather funny, original, or puzzling, but only a small percentage are used, like the classical smiling face and other cliches. Through replacing the written words with those ready-made symbols, we foster a disappearance of ideas, of explanations, of arguments, to the point where the exchanges can end up expressing nothing significant, or to say the least, their content are very undetermined. The mind becomes less sharp, inducing a loss of clarity for both the writer and the reader. It creates an illusion of communication where friendly massages replace any contentful message. The cute response is in general the primitive expression of mere insipid feelings that hinder reason. Then is in inauthenticity. When we receive such a message, we never know how to realize the meaning, since it's a purely formal gesture. We do not know if the smiling face is a real sign of enthusiasm or just a polite and compulsive reaction to a previous post. What can, what can he easily hide behind the emoji? emoji? Often it is a perfunctory reaction carried out without real interest, feeling or effort, which easily means, I do not really wish to talk to you or I do not want to make the effort of entering in a dialogue with you. The avoidance of any depth of substance in the usage of emojis provides an easy way to hide. It signifies a denial of dialogue, consciously or not, willingly or not. The apparent explicit meaning of these cute signs actually hides their vague and formal meaning hindering communication. As we already said, the growing diversity of emojis offer a large palette of symbols that can represent a wide variety of emotion and mental states, allowing to express diverse nuances. But the common usage remains quite conventional and quite bland. In order to conclude, let us make a couple of general remarks on the mental state of our society. As a result of the widespread usage of emojis, when they are sometimes omitted, the reader might interpret the message as aggressive. Thus one becomes a kind of hostage to the constant presence of emojis or emoticons. Like if we had to permanently show our good intentions to our interlocutors and reassure a fragilized fellow man. In fact, for some people, the use of emojis happens without even realizing it, as their minds are driven by a heightened concern for the gaze of others. The second comment is that the permanent use of emojis is in conformity with the transformation of our society and its cognitive habits. We are moving towards a more visual, immediate, and intuitive form of communication, away 
from a conceptual and reflective one. Reels are more popular than text. Very short, fast, engaging video images that create an impression instead of explaining. Emojis have a similar gestalt, quick reactive effect instead of a slower and deeper analysis. Such formats are highly recommended since apparently the standard contemporary viewer cannot today focus more than 40 seconds on any content.